Hey everybody, it's Don't Be Willy Boudreau, aka Russell Gamer, back with another installment of WGS TV right here on the WGS YouTube channel. Oh, well, hell in the cells tonight. And of course, you guys who follow me on WGS Radio, you know that this Wednesday night on Russell Down, the discussion of wrestling now, Stunley Man Ashley will have his full on review. But of course, you know me, I gotta put my two cents in whenever I can, and I'd love to do it on here for you guys to get you guys instant reactions to it um now i'm not gonna go full on about the pay-per-view ashley's gonna do that what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i have a few things i want to address here in this video concerning hell in the cell um first thing we saw uh well first thing i want to talk about rather um it was cody rhodes and the fact that they're discarding the Intercontinental title belt, the current one, and they're going back to the retro one. I really think that's a good move, in my opinion. Because uh, the Intercontinental title has always been a really prestigious title in the WWE. I mean, you know, if they put that title on you, that that says something. You know, that says that WWE believes in you for something. You know, that they're saying that we want you to run with this title. And, you know, sometimes people consider the Intercontinental title to be a bigger title than the WWE title in itself. Is that true? I don't know. But it is a really important title. And then the fact that they they switch from the current version back to the retro version of the title. I really thought that was great. Um and they they made it look really good, you know, that it was the it was the retro title a d design, I should say, with the white belt with a white strap on it. Almost a little bit similar to the one Shawn Michaels had. I'm trying to think of what WrestleMania it might have been. WrestleMania 9 it might have been. When Shawn Michaels had the Intercontinental title with the white strap. I would have to look that up to be honestly sure. But I, I really thought it was a good move, in my opinion, to switch it up like that. I really did. So, kudos to WWE for, for coming up with that and actually switching it to a retro title. Now, on to the two major title matches that we had tonight. You know, Mark Henry and Randy Orton for the World Heavyweight title in the Hell in the Cell. And the triple threat uh, uh, WWE Championship match, you know, Bertel Del Rio, uh, CM Punk, and John Cena. First off, Randy Orton and Mark Henry. Now, back at Night of Champions, I never really gave Mark Henry his fair shake. To be honest with you, uh, when he... He was really impressive when he was the WWE ECW champion. I, I give him that, but uh, that run didn't really last very well. It really didn't impress me, to be honest with you, even though it was a, a pretty good run. But uh, I re never really thought that they would actually put the World Heavyweight title on Mark Henry, and lo and behold, at Night of Champions, they did that. Now... For a Hell in a Cell match, this was really a, a very low quality match, in my opinion. Uh, I wasn't really impressed with either Orton or Henry in this match. Uh, you know, they did have a couple of good spots. Um, one of them was the uh, the DDT into the chair. I'm sorry, into the steps, rather. Um, Randy Orton DDTing Mark Henry. I thought that was a good spot. And... Uh, and a few of the other things they did outside Mark Henry and Randy Orton. Other than that, the matchup for a matchup for a major title in the company should be a very entertaining match. And this one wasn't. This one wasn't. I, I never like to speak too badly about a good performer. I always thought Randy Orton was a, a, a good wrestler, a good performer. Not tonight. Not tonight. The ending was... Let me say this. Orton hit the RKO. And Henry kicked out. And then as soon as that happened, I kind of knew what was going to happen next. You know, it was so predictable, I was going to lose my mind. Orton was going to go for the punt. Henry was going to counter into the World's Strongest Slam and retain the title, which is exactly what happened. Oh, I thought that match would have been so much better than it was. And it just wasn't. It just, oh, 
This would be something like you would see on a, a Friday Night Smackdown or a Monday Night Raw, but not a pay-per-view. Especially my home state of New Orleans, Louisiana. My, home, my, you know, my state, home state of Louisiana, rather. Uh, it's not my home city in New Orleans. Monday Night Raw is going to be an occasion on which I'm, I, you know, if I wanted to, I could go to it, but I can't. Well, um, I'll discuss that on another video. Uh, anyway. Like I said, uh, but what's really sad about this is the Randy Orton, Mark Henry thing is what was really entertaining about this about this whole angle, this whole thing happened after the match was over. Because after the match was over, Henry was going to do the normal thing he did. You know what he did to Big Show, what he did to Kane, what he did to the now fired. Vladimir Kozlov, the release of Vladimir Kozlov, and what what I believe he did to Great Khali on Friday Night SmackDown, I I missed part of it. You know, when I came back on it, it was just, I just had Great Khali on a, a a stretcher holding his ankle, so I'm I'm figuring that's probably what happened. You know, he, he tried to break Randy Orton's leg. Now, um, I was expecting possibly a run in at this point in time. You know, like so, like Big Show maybe, or Kane or Quite possibly as a surprise run and maybe The Undertaker to come after the World Heavyweight title. But um, it just turned out Randy Orton, you know, just moved the leg out of the way in the nick of time and then just went nuts on Henry with the steel chair just whacking him. And he actually went outside the ring and started, he was going crazy with it. Next, you know, while Henry was on the ground, he gave, gives uh, Orton a kick in the balls. And then and runs up faster than somebody screaming free lunch at KFC. So. Now. That's my thoughts on it guys. Um, Sin, the uh, Sin Cara versus Sin Cara match. Mm, I don't know. At, po at some points in this match. The crowd was with it. The crowd was out of it. And uh, it was very difficult to for the commentators. You know, this is one time I actually feel bad for guys like Michael Cole and uh, Booker T and Jim Ross. Is the fact that you know you had two guys of the same name, but you had no way to really distinguish which one you're talking about other than the color. And that's pretty much what they had to do. At first, they went with numbers one and two, with the guy in blue being number one, the guy in black being number two, and then they went to the Spanish versions of the colors. Now, this is not meant to be offensive or anything. This is what they actually said. So don't leave me any hate comments. They called the, the guy in the black outfit Sin Cara Negro because apparently that's the Spanish word for black. And they called the, the, the Sin Cara that was in blue Sin Cara Azul. So maybe that's the only way to distinguish you know, the two Sin Cara's apart is by calling them by their colors. Um, on to the w WWE Championship match. I meant to only say two W's. Apologize about that. This is World Wrestling Entertainment, not Worldwide Wrestling Entertainment. I don't know why I said that. Anyway. Match of the night, to be honest with you guys. Really, I, I thought it was really entertaining. Del Rio, Puck, and Cena really delivered in this main event match. And they really need to, because, to be honest with you, uh, a few of the matches were really, really weak, including the Randy Orton, Mark Henry, uh, World of Heavyweight title match, and sad to say that it was re really weak, uh, even though they tried really hard with the after post-match activities with the steel chair to try to salvage the entire thing. It just, my opinion on that one, it was just too little, too late. Um, you know, I don't want to say all of the matches were really weak. You know, I really enjoyed the Sheamus Christian match. I thought that was really good. Uh, the Divas match, yawn. So, for having such a weak card, I mean, the surprise match with Cody Rhodes and uh, John Morrison for the uh, the newly f new new Intercontinental Title that uh, the retro looking one that I really actually like better than the current one they were using 
I thought that was a really good match. Uh, several times I thought it was going to be Morrison, but Cody Rhodes ends up retaining, thus further continuing the spiral of Jomo. Um, now back to the WWE Championship match. I, I really thought it was good. You know, I was really impressed. At uh, at one point in the match, um, Cena had the STF on Del Rio, and Ricardo Rodriguez. Uh, knocked out the referee, got the the key from him, unlocked the door, and uh, passed a steel pipe to Del Rio, you know, with Cena giving Ricardo Rodriguez his attitude adjustment. Then after that, uh, Del Rio hits him in the stomach, uh, not, throws him out of the hell in the cell, and proceeds to lock the door, thus keeping the defending WWE Champion out of the triple threat match. And so on and so forth happens. You know, Del Rio grabs the pipe again, uses uses it on Punk, knocks him out, and Del Rio is the new WWE champion. Now, the match in itself, I believe, held held on its own. Um, however, what really brought it even further over, for those of you who know the wrestling lingo, like I know the wrestling lingo, was the fact that they had... Miz and R-Truth. Now, this isn't the first encounter we see Miz and R-Truth. We saw him at the start of the pay-per-view saying they bought tickets. John Laurinaitis, is the executive vice president of talent relations in the WWE. Threw him out. Then we had uh, Miz and R-Truth attacking Air Boom, you know, Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne, in the back after their match they had with Dolph Ziggler and, and Jack Swagger, which was... Eh, I'm talking about the match. I'm not talking about the attack. And uh, I feel kind of bad for uh, Ezekiel Jackson. They tell him to come dressed out and make sure they have their gear on and stuff like that. And the only thing they have him do is do a run. It, you know, the only way they can get time, you know, airtime on a pay-per-view is by coming coming into the shot to check on Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne. I kind of feel bad for those two guys because I thought they were really going somewhere with uh, Alex Riley. Uh, Ezekiel Jackson just flatlined, in my opinion. But uh, Miz and R-Truth apparently were underneath the ring somehow. And they came out wearing hoodies and they, they had like bats and stuff. They were attacking the referees. They attacked Cena. No, um, no they didn't attack Cena because Cena wasn't in the ring. They attacked Del Rio. They attacked Punk. They attacked the cameraman repeatedly. They attacked both referees. You know, they actually, Triple H came out. You know, almost everybody in the locker room came out. Uh, it, Nearly looked like they were were about to tell tear the entire hell in the cell apart, because if you remember, you know, well from what I saw on my big 42 inch high definition LCD TV, guys, was the the cage like this, and it was leaning. One part of it was leaning out, so it looked like they almost got it. Then, uh, then they got a pair of bolt cutters and. Uh, Miz and R Truth end up get, getting arrested. Now, uh, as they're walking out in the entranceway, game the game completes right here. The game comes out of nowhere and just beats the ever-loving snot out of Miz, and he had to be restrained by two big bald guys in suits. I have no idea who they were, but they were big and they were bald. And that's pretty much how the end of the pay-per-view. Um, like I said, I, th- I think the main event m- might have saved the pay-per-view, in my opinion. Because everything else was just stale as bread. Stale as uh, three-week-old bread, in my opinion. But what I want to know is what your guys' opinion were of WWE's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And also, don't forget to tune in this Wednesday night to blogtalkradio.com slash wgsradio for the Studling Man Ashley's full pay-per-view review of WWE's Hell in the Cell. And don't, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Gamer. Don't forget to check out my new blogging site that I'm putting together, guys. It's still a work in progress, but I'm hoping uh, to get it set up. You can see all of my current videos and all my blogging entries on it, wrestlegamer.blogspot.com. Be sure you check that out. Also, don't forget the main su- website of the WGS, which is www.thewrestlegamershow.com. We're trying to revitalize the site, guys, so hopefully you guys can help out. And 
still at this time we're still 10 subs away from 400 guys come on we need your help if you haven't subbed yet subscribe 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 so with that being said our double b billy boo drill thank you very much for watching